for the last three years that I have had the privilege, and I mean that sincerely, of being on this committee, I have been keenly aware of the freight train of the NAD moving in this direction. And I'm convinced that what we are doing here today with this document, the decisions and speeches that were made yesterday, will not bring about the unity that we're asking for or looking for. The committee met Sunday afternoon and uh, yesterday, twice yesterday, and was able to come up with a statement by 3 o'clock p.m. yesterday afternoon. As the North American Division Executive Committee, we, along with our brothers and sisters around the world, wholeheartedly affirm a shared commitment to the Seventh-day Adventist faith, our position. We recognize Christ as the head of the church. We are guided by the Bible, the Holy Spirit, the writings of Ellen G. White, and a spirit of Christ-like forbearance. As such, we are compelled to reject the spirit and direction of the GC voted document. As it is not consistent with the biblical model of the church. We simply cannot, in good conscience, support or participate in the implementation of the process outlined in the GC voted document. In the three requests of action, the very first one is to revoke the uh, document of accountability. The second one was to allow every, any division to make whatever non-doctrinal issues policy within their division to meet the needs of their division. The third one was to ask the general conference in general conference session to validate and affirm that. General conference cannot do that in my opinion. The second one, if it was to do, it would lose the worldwide church status because now what we would have is that we would have independent divisions interpreting what Adventism is throughout this whole field. I, um, the first one, I say this very kindly, but to reject the, or to accept the first one, we're basically denying the authority of the general conference. I, I, uh, I love this church. This is my church. I read a story one time about the death march, you're going to have World to wrap it up, and I'll I'll give you extra time. In that death march, the survivors said that food was so scarce that if a soldier found a mouse, it fed four men. If they found a cricket, it found two. It it fed two men, but they could always tell when a man was about to die. And do you know how they could tell? When they stopped sharing. Yesterday we voted to reduce the amount of money that we give to the General Conference. I am a missionary and uh, I study culture. This is what I see happening in North America. Second wave feminism started in the 60s. It is explicitly secular and anti-Christian. All gender differences and the nuclear family are to be eliminated and that for a woman to achieve self-actualization, she must be separated from the biological reality of childbearing. Hence, lesbianism and abortion are articles of faith for second-wave feminists. We are now in the era of fourth-wave feminism, where the transgender movement takes the second-wave feminist concepts that the real you is not linked to your biology to its natural conclusion. Hence, the modern LGBTQI agenda, which again is explicitly secular, 
atheist, and anti-God in its um, view. I am honored to serve alongside women in ministry as equal colleagues, and I praise God for that. However, I am convinced that women's ordination must have a solid biblical foundation. So far, the reality is that we in the NAD have failed on three occasions to convince the worldwide church of the biblical basis for women's ordination, and we've failed to convince a significant minority in our church in North America as well. If, on the other hand, as this document suggests, we're pressing forward with women's ordination primarily on the basis of cultural resonance, let us understand that the second wave feminism is the explicit philosophical foundation for the modern equality and LGBTQI agenda. I speak on behalf of many lay members. We are tired of returning tithes and offerings into a division where professors and pastors promote the LGBTQI agenda with seeming impunity. We are failing in holding ourselves to account when unbiblical ideas and concepts are promoted in our schools and pulpits. Our house, Brother Chairman, is not in order. I do share the concerns of this wider group about this document as voted, but the larger picture is we are pointing out a speck in the eyes of the worldwide church while ignoring the log in our own eyes. A Christian response to the compliance vote would be to recognize that we are failing to keep our own house in order. You, you need to finish up. Thank you. To repent of our drift from the word of God and to humbly ask the worldwide church to support us with prayer and counsel and time that we may set our spiritual house in order. Okay, the motion passes 176 in favor, 48 opposed.